There is so much that you need to learn in a beauty course. They cannot teach you absolutely everything. So they teach you the basics and then when you start working in a salon, you learn through experience and you learn more when you're sent on further training with different brands. So I've made a list of all these things that I believe should have been taught in the course. You may know some of these things already. You might have been taught these things. It really does depend on your teacher and I, th I think it mainly depends on the exam board. Right, so the first thing that they don't teach you when it comes to skincare is the fact that 10% of your skin is due to genetics and 90% is external factors. Mind blown. What this means is if you, if I have good skin and someone says, Melis, you have such good skin, what's your secret? And I say genetics, I mean, is it really? If I was to live in Australia where I was exposed to a lot of sun, if I took the underground every single day where I was exposed to all of that dirty air and I worked in a place like which was really polluted, um, if I was a smoker, if I... you get where I'm going with this. Are my genes gonna do much in this case? I guess it doesn't. The second thing that they don't teach you in your beauty course, which I think is very, I'm really upset that I wasn't taught about this. I wasn't taught what Roaccutane is. Roaccutane is medication that a doctor gives you if you have really uh, bad acne, if you've got severe acne. If a customer is taking Roaccutane, you have to know about it because there are certain treatments that you're not allowed to do. And it's all because of the side effects that Roaccutane can cause. Um, not everybody gets these side effects, but e even if they don't, you can't do waxing, you can't do um, microdermabrasion, you can't do exfoliation. So if you are doing a facial, you cannot exfoliate. One of the side effects is dry skin. Some clients, they get dry dry lips really badly that it cracks on the side. If a customer is taking Rakutane, they take it as a course. Even if they finish the course, they're still not allowed to have these treatments for another six months. That's how much it affects the skin. Um, that's how cautious we need to be. Um, and that's why we should have been taught what it is in the first place. Another thing that we weren't taught properly is how to do extractions. So we were taught to do extractions, you know, wherever you see the blackheads, that's where you do, where you extract. And it tends to be the nose and the chin area. When I started working in a clinic and I did my first facial, I got a complaint because the client said um, in the review, oh, the beauty therapist didn't do extractions all over my face. When I got this bad review, um, one of my colleagues showed me how to do extractions properly. It might depend on which salon you work at, but I've worked in, I've lost count, I've worked in maybe six different salons and they all do extractions this way. They do the whole face. So I normally start from the forehead. I work my way down. I do the nose and then I do this area here. I look at the cheeks, if I look around the ears and then I do the chin. You don't have to do it in this order. This is just how I personally do it and how I was taught to do it in salon. For example, this the center of the forehead, right? I cannot see blackheads on this client, but I give it a squeeze and I can see crap coming out of her pores. So clearly these pores are clogged up and that is something that I wasn't taught on my course. And I'm telling you now so that you don't get a bad review like me and learn the hard way. Another thing that they don't teach you, well, they taught me this on my course. My teacher mentioned it actually. Um, we are not taught how bad makeup removal wipes are for your skin. They normally have a lot of alcohol in them, which dries out the skin. Even if you get alcohol-free ones, there are still other ingredients in there that really dry out the skin and strip the skin from its natural oils. Um, it's just too harsh. Maybe my skin is just sensitive, but when I use makeup removal wipes, my skin feels very sore especially around my eyes, it feels very irritated. The makeup wipes just mess about with the pH level of the skin um, and it just causes irritation. I'm now gonna move on to things that they didn't teach me about when it comes to painting nails and just manicures in general. I was not taught how important it is to apply base coat with more care. I don't know if I'm the only one, but when I when I paint a clear colour, I do it so fast because it's clear, I don't feel like it needs to be neat, but it really does. So if you don't apply base coat evenly and then you apply the colour and it sort of overlaps on the area where there's no base coat, that's 
it's more likely to chip. If you apply the colours evenly, it's less likely to chip. Now, the second thing is something that's very simple, but it will help you, it will just, it will help. <laughs> I've noticed that when people first start learning how to paint nails, they don't really know how to hold that client's finger. They sort of just rest it on their hand which is fine. Sometimes I don't hold it very firmly either. It's important when it comes to painting the side walls of the nail. If you find that you're a messy painter and you get the paint all on the side walls on the skin, this one very simple thing will save your life. You simply pinch the skin and you pinch it back. When you peel that skin back, you can get to the side walls of the nail. You can really get that polish into the side and have no gap and you won't get the polish on the skin. So simple, right? Another thing that we weren't taught, okay, we were taught, but in a very stupid way, if you ask me, if you do get polish on the skin, right, what were you taught to do? You was taught to get an orange stick, and then you had to wrap this cotton wool around the orange stick, and then you dip it into the polish remover, and then you clean up the skin, and then, uh-oh, the cotton wool on the stick is all covered in red and it's not really cleaning the skin anymore, you're getting red everywhere. So you take that off and then again you put a clean piece of cotton wool on the stick and then you just carry on doing this stupidness and then you get fluff everywhere and then instead I highly advise you to use a brush. A makeup brush, it could be an angled one like this, it could be round, it doesn't matter just as long as it's small and flat, so not very fluffy, just quite thin so that you have more control and you don't get it on the nail. Dip this into polish remover, clean up the sides, wipe the X, you know, whatever you've taken off onto the, the tissue, and then that's it. So quick, so precise, so much easier no risk of getting fluff anywhere. The first ever salon that I worked at, I wasn't even trained, I was just a receptionist, but I loved painting my own nails and the beauty therapist there taught me about this makeup brush tip and everyone I've known who hates painting nails or is new to painting nails or whatever, I've always, always told them about this tip and they've found it very helpful. The same beauty therapist that taught me this makeup brush tip also taught me another really good tip as well. Now, when we learn how to paint a nail, it's always you, you do the middle, and then you do the side, and then you do the other side. The thumbs, the where the cuticle is, it is quite wide, and that free brush technique doesn't work very well all the time or even if like someone has very wide nails it just doesn't work you don't get the cuticle area that's straight and that's when the this beauty therapist gave me this tip where you simply just paint horizontally so you turn your brush round and you paint around along the cuticle again getting close to it but not touching it and then that way you create a very straight line. I don't believe that there is a certain way of painting nails. The way they teach you is just the guideline. I feel like if you learn how to control nail polish, learn how it moves, learn the consistency, learn how fast it dries, learn how much you can really play about with it and neatening it up before you ruin it, um, learn how much to get on your brush. If you know how to control nail polish, then you can paint in any way you like. The next one is about gel polish. When I was taught how to do gel polish, I was taught how to do it, and you know, oh yeah, you put it under the lamp, and then when it hits the light, it cures, it dries. But what is curing? What what does it mean when the, how, how did it dry? And you will get clients who ask you this as well. Um, I came across a YouTube video of a nail technician who told me what exactly happens and the science behind it, and I was just like, why weren't we taught this? This is just, it, we should know it. So basically what happens is the gel polish, the ingredients in the gel polish, has a chemical reaction when it hits that LED light, the UV light, and that chemical reaction causes the gel polish to harden. That's it. That's all they had to say in the course. Like, why weren't we taught that? 
Now another thing that I really want to mention, and I feel like they should have mentioned this as well, you really don't have to do these one day courses that these colleges offer. After you get your level 2 or your level 3 qualification or both, whatever, you don't have to then do a one day course in spray tan and a one day course in gel polish and a one day course in this, because when you work for these salons, they will send you on training anyway, and a lot of the time they will pay for your training. They will have certain terms and conditions where you need to stay at the salon for a certain amount of time if you do plan on leaving earlier then you do need to pay for this course um because it's just not fair for them if they've paid for it and then you leave the next day if i paid for my gel polish course straight after i finished my level two i would have been trained in ibd because that's what they used back then when i was studying i did not work in one salon that used ibd gel polish i mean yeah i would have learned the technique and stuff but i was sent on opi training and I've worked in so many salons where they have OPI and they like it when they see that that on my CV but I feel like yeah they should mention that because then there are these girls out there who think the more they train in the better but what then happens is they train in level 2, train in level 3, they do all of these one day courses when they finally start applying for jobs they don't have experience because they've been so busy doing all of these one day courses the final thing that we weren't taught now it's not about being taught but I feel like it wasn't mentioned for us to be aware of is um, is about how when you go on training with different brands you kind of get brainwashed a little bit into falling in love with this brand because that's what their job is. I've trained in so many different brands, fell in love with all of them to a point where I trained in so many that I became a little bit overwhelmed because I was just, I was confused. If students are made aware of this then they will go into training with an open mind and really think about what products are actually good and what products are just meh you know just a 180 pound moisturizer that does fuck all but we're taught that it's good and it's amazing because it's 180 pound I don't want this video to be too long so I'm going to end it there. If you did find this video helpful give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you like and I'll see you next time. Bye.